the sands of Egypt, the British Eighth Army prepares for what history will record as the Seventh Battle of Libya. Planning the action, General Montgomery and Air Vice Marshal Cunningham. For weeks, the British prepared with a thoroughness bred of past experience. For weeks, vast supplies and equipment have poured in from England and America. And as Britain's Eighth Army grows, is reinforced, not a supply ship reaches Rommel. So completely are Allied submarines and planes dominating the Mediterranean. Then, in the black hours before dawn, Montgomery gave the order to advance. Guns were first to blaze into action. Daybreak, and squadrons of Allied fighter planes take to the skies. The most powerful air fleet ever unleashed in the Middle East. Montgomery's armored might begins to roll. The British offensive is on in force. From the sky, American and RAF bombers blast the enemy across a 40-mile front, unleashing tons of high explosive on Rommel's surprised and reeling Africa Corps. Relentlessly, United States bombers press home the attack concentrating on troop transports and supply lines. Yankee bombardiers and Britons repaying the Nazis for the strafing of helpless civilians who once fled along the choked and bleeding roads of Belgium and France. In the desert, new tank destroyers far outranging the Nazi guns smash Rommel's vaunted ring of steel. breaks through. Scots of the reformed 51st Highlanders, shattered in Europe, now avenging their comrades. Tanks, guns, men, Canadians, British, Anzacs, slashing the Nazi forces to ribbons. complete is Allied air superiority that the Germans offer little resistance. Sailing above and through Nazi anti-aircraft fire, the bombers shoot down Messerschmitts that challenge their advance. With devastating accuracy, bombs made in the USA spread havoc and destruction, take terrific toll of the shattered Nazi war machine. Outflanked, outgunned, outmaneuvered. Roundup of prisoners, dazed, shell-shocked Nazis, remnants of the once proud Africa Corps, whole divisions of Italians, abandoned by their German masters, gave up, begged to be captured. Pressing forward more than 35 miles a day, the British advance becomes the route of Rommel. Advancing past battered tanks, where so-called Nazi supermen died in frenzied flight. The desert strewn with their dead. Here, the Nazi goal of conquest is buried in the sands of Africa. Grey dawn off the French North African port of Oran brings United Nations the best news yet. A gigantic American invasion force is landing. A second front is at hand. Scenes here at Oran are typical of successful occupations from Algiers on the Mediterranean to Casablanca on the Atlantic. Coastal guns guarding Oran and Merz El Kabir drop a few shells into the harbor. But everywhere, French resistance is hardly more than a gesture. From transports standing offshore, 
United States troops observe the action, await the order to go in. They go in armored snub-nosed assault boats, well protected from fire. Wading ashore, the Americans establish beachheads exactly as planned months in advance. Supplies and equipment follow with a miracle of coordination and efficiency. Everything is carried out according to schedule. Losses to French shipping are slight. French casualties during sporadic engagements are treated by American first aid and Navy doctors. The American entry into the historic city of Oran is a memorable event. For in seizing control of France's strategic North African ports, the United States is striking the first blow toward bringing about the collapse of the Axis. Troops first bombard the natives with leaflets printed in French, bearing a message from President Roosevelt. Instructed to conduct themselves courteously toward the populace, the army takes over without incident. A French hero of another war is honored. Americans have always been friends of France. French soldiers await only the call from loyal countrymen to align themselves with forces against the Axis. Natives of Oran look with interest upon the Americans of whom they've heard so much. Gape with wonder as a Signal Corps trooper contacts his regiment by field telegraph. First to be seized are Oran's four aerodromes. Paratroops took over Blida and Maison Blanche, the principal fields in Algiers. Consolidating their positions, United States mechanized units move quickly to cut railway lines and highways to join United States forces in the Northwest with the British in Libya. For with the Axis thrown out of Africa, one prong of Hitler's pincers to strangle the Middle East is utterly destroyed. Of far greater significance, when the United Nations hold North Africa, the Axis will be open to attack from Sicily to Mermont. African oil tanks are in allied hands. Power plants are taken over. Railway lines are operated by experts from America. Trucks can now haul supplies overland. Down the excellent coastal highway, American infantrymen swing along on the road to Tunisia, the last Axis stronghold in Africa. Opening phase of what military experts regard as a second front of major importance. The American occupation of North Africa may well prove to be the turning point of the war.